Hello everybody and welcome back to my video log, my channel. Sorry I've been away for a little bit of a while. Oh, so many things to do, so many people to see, so many... You know, life can be complicated, can't it? So, but no, 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 let's stop me dribbling on about this. Let's have a little look at what we're looking at today. So here is um, a kit on AliExpress. Uh, two pieces, the Nam Nap 250. Uh, this is a kit that will be working between 15 and 40 volts. And it is at 40 volts and 80 watts amplifier from what I can tell just by looking at the description across here. Now, I've built these, well, I've built one of them, and I'm going to say straight away that it didn't have this capacitor that I'm sort of like over here, this 10 microfarad. It didn't have that. There's a canister on there. There's um, electrolytic. Never mind. Never mind. I expect these things change anyway. So let's have a quick look down here. What we got a uh, mod version. Right, well, mod version. I don't know if they're trying to get themselves away from the original NAP 250 by saying it's the mod version. I don't know. Um, so let's have a look, see what it says. No, if you're choose the origin, you need to solder yourself. Yeah, so NAP 250 mod version, mini circuit board, blah, blah, blah. AB um, works in AB mode instead of A mode, so it's going to be more um, <coughs> more efficient. Now it has got a THD and noise equals 0.01%. To be honest with you, I find that hard to believe. But we'll look, take a look at it. And uh, when we click there for product photos, they're going to be below. Looks like they've been doing some different bits and pieces with their website yeah this is just a bunch of um for the closed sound stage uh, i don't you know I, I mean i expect there will be some good reviews but i don't tend to go on a lot of reviews so unfortunately i found out with another big company that's very much similar to this that um reviews go up as soon as people buy things They'll say things like, oh yeah, this is great, great, I can't I wait for it to arrive and for me to build. Well, until it's arrived and you've built it and you've played with it and, you, you, you know, come on. They, but that's the way things seem to work these days. Uh, I'm just going to show you just a quick circuit board diagram. Now, I've not gone through this to see if this is uh, exactly the way uh, this particular circuit is. But it gives you something to have a little look at. And there's a bit of uh, information out there. Now, this is a, a proper NAM NAP250. And this is the review on the website What Hi Fi. And of course, it's going to get a very high rated review. And I would think for 5,700 British pounds or 8,999 American dollars or 13,500 Australian dollars. You'd expect it to sound nice, and all they want this one is to sound as good as the last one. So I just want to give you a little bit of a thing about NAM. They've been around for a long time. They're very good. They're very well uh, um, revered, and I really don't see you getting the same sort of sound quality out of this. But hey, we're not here to judge. We're here to just to check it out. That was me just knocking over my phone, which is my camera in this instance. And I might have to chop that bit out. Uh, yeah, so, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's the way that is. So let's get on with the tests. And um, we'll have a quick look at the actual thing itself. And then we'll get on and do some tests. Uh, so this is the, um, the kit actually built up and put onto a heat sink. Uh, remember in the input isolators uh, behind these. They come with these rubber things. You, you can use uh, you know, those which are ideal. Oh, that's why they come in their the, the kit. Or you can use the um, you know, the ones, the wafer thin uh, mica, which is what I tend to use only because I bought a big massive pack of them, pack of them at one stage because it was so cheap. Uh, so I figure I should use them, but I'll just use them here. Uh, it's just something that's worth pointing out. Let's get this is that these are all well and good and it does make life easier actually not having to solder or you know screw on 
using these um, uh, spade connectors. 63 mil these are. Uh, the one down here can be a bit tight fitting, um, but you know, it, 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 it all seems to go in there pretty good. That's a bit bent, I don't know why, probably because my cat's been jumping over this desk, but uh, everything seems to be okay there. We got that nice little thing underneath, that nice little, um, can't quite make it out, guys, which way around that actually goes. Here it is, that way around. Always oh, funny when they put those underneath there, and it's the same thing, that J. Uh, JLM is it? Uh, or LJM, LJM at foxmail.com. My eyes are not working at all today. Okay, we got the modified version. I don't know if that stops them from getting into trouble with copyright or whether, you know, they just don't really care. So let's stick that on then and um, see what it looks like. See what it sounds like. No, what? No, no. See how it responds on the on the tests. We're going to be using this Analog Discovery 2 14 bit just because uh, oh, because I got it. I should use it really, right? So let me get it connected up. Uh, simple enough. All of your grounds, including the dummy load ground, your power ground, and your speaker ground, all go to this one. And then you've got your power negative, because remember this is a positive and negative um, supply onto this. So you need a positive VCC plus, VCC negative, and the, the common ground, which is connecting uh, a negative and positive together to make that a common ground. That gives us that swing. Because so we're going to just connect that up. And then this is our input, positive, negative, if I remember correctly. Yep. We've got positive and the negative input here. We're going to connect our waveform generator to there. But our signaling. And we'll just see how it performs. It's using the, all the standard stuff that came with it. Um, some of this stuff is actually interchangeable. Um, these uh, transistors here. In actual fact, there's quite a lot of the stuff on it that you can uh, interchange with other components if you want to. But we're not going to get into that right now. We're just going to set it up and just see how it performs in the mathematical way. You know what we're going to get as a, an output reading. Um, it's, you know, it's not um, a reflection particularly, apart from the distortion uh, meter. It's not a reflection really on the sound quality when we do the square wave because um, it just doesn't work like that. Right, let's get it connected up and let's get it on the go. Okie dokie. Okay, that's that connected up. Looks like a bit of a cluster um, mess. But, you know, that, that's how we've got to do it. Now, you can adjust the quiescent current on here, which I quite like. Uh, let me just get that zoomed in, something reasonable. You can adjust, adjust the quiescent current on here with this little uh, variable resistor, uh, which is pretty good because I did find on one of the other kits I built this, um, it could rise a bit high, but mm, you know, I could have probably changed that by putting a bigger heat sink on it uh, so it didn't start doing its. I missed it as well. I need to find that bit of video maybe and show you. But anyway, so we can adjust that on there, which is pretty good. Uh, we can get it so once it's all warmed up and settled in, get it to where we want it to be. Now quiescent current, and uh, just let that settle there, put a bit of a, a little bit of something on there to stop it from moving with the, um, you know, with the um, various of, variations of temperature and movement, whatever. Um, right, let's start with the test. Let's get this set up for what we want. We want 8 ohms. We want uh, that for that. Alright guys, so we're back here. Uh, THD plus noise versus the frequency, right? THD plus noise, that's the one that gives us a good go. Uh, uh, channel 1, THD noise, just checking everyone, the parameters are correct. 10 to 30 hertz, let's go. Let's just hit run on that. Okay, well, that's um, it's not the greatest we've seen. Okay, but this is incorporating noise as well. So what we can do is actually we can just filter out the noise. We can just look at the um, the output 
of THD. All right, so that's filtered out the noise. If I put that back with the noise, without the noise. Um, according to their specifications, this is supposed to be getting uh, down here, 0 0.01. And as we can see, it's it's not, you know, it's not exactly there. That's one of the highest points there. We got a uh, 0 0.18. Um, you know, that's not, it's not terrible, but then it's not you know, particularly great either. Uh, we'll do the power one afterwards. Uh, we'll look at the frequency response first. Let's just set this up. One channel, uh, 0.2 in. Uh, 50 steps on this. Let's give this a go on the frequency response. In actual fact, we're going to go 100 steps there and run. Uh, yeah, I don't want that like that. I want this here and I want this here sorry my my bad because I want the zero here so you can see it easier um, as we go up and down the scale so let me just run that again well right there well there's the frequency response um, and we can see here and this junction here this is uh, 20 Hertz now I wouldn't be bothered about that if it's what would that be down there? That's uh, there we got our zero point zero zero in this middle line, which is where we like to be, all the way down here, nice and flat. That, yes, I've seen better outputs. I'm not going to say I haven't. I've seen better outputs, but this does not look particularly bad at all. Even when we get to like the highest peak, let's say that's around about here. Um, uh, 0 0.10 dBr, um, sort of like up against the reference input. All right, and that's at uh, sort of like five, six kilohertz, so it's like 10 kilohertz. I ain't gonna worry about it too much. That doesn't look too bad at all, really. Don't look too bad at all. So let's have a look at this THD versus power. Now, remember, we, we are. 8 ohms load, let me just change that. We're on an 8 ohms load, we are going to be running from 1 to 100 watts. Uh, THD noise, that's the settings that's there anyway, and we're going to stop at 1% THD, right? As soon as you get to 1%, I mean, it's... 1% yeah. THD, you can hear it. 1% uh, THD, um, you know, it's quite a bit really, but you know, we're, we're going to stop there. So we're just going to see what we can get from our 32 watts. Now I'm giving it the maximum current allowed, and it will only draw about like one and a half amps anyway. This, but we'll give it a go. We'll run it from here eight times, and let's just see what we get. Hey, well, you know, again, that's not too bad. If we look at the 0.1 percent line. That's nice down here, and here's our 1% uh, distortion, and that's at 52.99 watts. Uh, we get there. If I just put it on the crossover, I prefer to put it there, 52.99 watts. Yeah, sorry. And when we're down here, you know, we're at 45 watts down here. There's 0 0.105. Uh, around about here again, you can see again how it's like just risen up slightly here, like it did on the. Um, frequency response but that's not too bad it's not too bad that's uh that type of output it's, again it's not the best um i've seen pretty sure i've seen you know a little bit better than that but it doesn't make any difference it doesn't make any difference that's not too bad at all what does that mean on sound quality well not a lot really it doesn't seem to particularly work like that um so now we're going to do a square wave test channel one uh, we're going to keep this level at uh, 200 millivolts going in. Uh, RMS, of course, not uh, peaked. Um, we're going to use a um, 1000 hertz. We could do a, like 800 and you know, 5k, 10k, but we're just going to use this 1000 hertz because it keeps everything nice and simple. And I'm just going to do a, a, a single hit on that. Uh, we'll just see what it shows us. All right, so that's our 1000 hertz. Uh, now what that would say to me, just like this, it's just, uh, you know, there's hardly anything going on there. I wouldn't even um, be too bothered about it. 
whatsoever. Uh, we're just going to go down to, let's say, um, 500 hertz. And have a quick little peek at that single. Yep. Again, you know, there's hardly anything there. Nothing really worth writing home about. Um, hardly anything there. Let's drop it down now to 50. You should see a difference on this. I just hit on a single. All right. All right, we can see some drop off now. Uh, it's, I mean, again, not too bad really. It's just uh, that is base drop off, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's not as low as down here, but it's certainly not down here. Just yet. Let's have a little, little quick look on that 20 kilohertz because, the, to be honest with you, the, for most people, it wouldn't even bother going down less than 60 hertz just because your speakers are probably not going to be able to represent that anyway. Of course, some of you out there will have speakers that can represent that and more, but chances are you're not playing around with these little tiny kits. Um, you know. Uh, so alright then, and um, what we did see actually there was a little bit of loss wasn't there on the um, frequency response. Let's just have a quick look back at that because that will still be there and we can see at our 20 hertz look. You can see the drop off there um, and we can actually scale it to there and we can say at 20 hertz uh, we got a 0 0.11 dB, dB uh, drop off compared to the reference going in. All right? So it's hardly anything. So I'd say that that's, it's looking all right. It's looking all right. Um, let's just go up the scale a little bit then. Let's go to, let's say, um, 500. Zero, zero. So we're at 5K now. Uh, do a single shot. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, uh, nothing wrong with that. Let's go straight to, let's say, 15. Uh, is it on a single? Again, not really that bad. Yes, there's a little tiny bit of, um, uh, you know, it's losing its rise time, but hey, you've got to be able to measure this as well, and I've got to be able to put that into it, and I'm not sure if this is uh, capable of shoving it in so we don't lose any of that rise time now. But let's just do another one at, uh, let's say, uh, 25, just to go for the extreme. This. Uh, we'll look at it as a single, yeah, to be honest with you, uh, it's not too bad. Now the test will be of course the sound, but I'm going to say this now about doing these sort of sound tests, is the whole thing about doing these sound tests is it is all well and good for me sat here uh, with my little setup, let me just get this going on this, yeah, so it's all well and good me sat here, you know, with my little setup with my speaker up there and that one there so then they're not even matched anyway and it will sound okay or i can you know put them over to these speakers here uh, these floor slammers these monitor audios and i'm sure that it's not going to sound too bad at all because it doesn't seem to come up as any big problem on anything so i'm going to go out on a limb and just say I don't think it's too bad. It's just what it's giving out here is not too bad. But this is not going to tell you um, about sound quality. You know, the outputs on this will not tell you, you cannot determine to you what that sound quality is going to be like because a lot of the time the sound quality with these things is a personal thing. It's your personal preference, how you like to hear the stuff. So um, I can tell you now that the actual amp that I'm running at the moment is the L12-2. That's what I've been using at the moment to listen to that. And I can tell you that uh, just moving my speakers around, getting them closer, a little bit wider, or a bit too far wide, a little bit closer, for my personal preference, um, you know, it's, um, it's my personal preference. And so you're all gonna have that. And because I've not, you know, run the L12 uh, on these little speakers I've got up on my bench here again, on these ones, I've been running down on the other, it's gonna sound different. And that's all going to be down to your personal taste. That's all um, subjective. It's all going to be down to your personal taste. Uh, so we'll have to just um, see. And if you can, if you can see over here, look, we can have a little look and see the quiescent current over there. When it's just sat there with no input, really, it's all on, but no input, you can get to see what's going on there. So if it was at high voltage, let's say there was 40 volts on there, we'd probably be up more like uh, 46. 
maybe even 50, but that's fine as well. Okay, well that's that's it for this. Um, the next thing will be the sound test, and I will do it, but trying to feed you that, um, trying to give you that, all I can tell you is what I think. I can't really put it across to you well enough. I've got nothing here that will pick this up and get it to you so you can hear it out of your system, your so I don't know what you're using, whether you're listening through a phone, a laptop, or a hi-fi system, whatever. Um, I can't do that for you. And I, to me, it just seems, uh, it seems a little bit um, unfair to try and say, yeah, it sounds great here. But I tell you now, if I move my speakers, it's gonna sound slightly different to me. Yeah? <laughs> so where do I put them to tell you how it sounds? All I can let you know is no, there's no distortion. No, there's no popping uh, as you're powering up and powering off um, or whatever, um, you know, sound description that noise makes. Um, yeah. So there we go. Anyway, guys, I think this has been uh, way too long on, the, uh, on me getting here and giving it to you uh, like this. And it will be in a few days, maybe four days, I'll do the L12. All right, which I know there's come, quite a few people have asked me about the L12. What do I think of the L12 and uh, and all that? And uh, and I'll give you a uh, yeah, I'll give you the rundown of that in the next few days. All right, guys. Hey, if you're tuned in, you got this far. Thanks for watching. Uh, give me your feedback. If there's any other way that you think I can test this, that you think without having to go and buy equipment and do bits and pieces, but with the kit that I got here that I haven't shown you, just let me know and I'll I'll try and fit in a little short or something and, and do that for you. Till the next one, take it easy, you're all safe and everything, and um, we'll speak again soon. Bye for now.